Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mind Your Mental. Just a reminder that this podcast is not meant to be a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. I know they are hard to find, and I get that. I have a bunch of resources on my website if you need them, but I am not your clinician. I am a psychologist, but I am not your psychologist. So if you need any specific help, please look for the help of a licensed mental health professional. Learn all you can learn from the podcast. Enjoy the episode. Well, Dr. Dodson, wait, I think I have sound effects. Uh oh, come I on, don't. come up. I thought I did though. Oh, I did it one it. time. All right. Cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> wait, no, I do. Wait, wait, wait. We our own sound effects. Black people are creative. Did I hit it? Did I hit the sound effect? Did it do it? No. I, I didn't hear anything. But we can use our imaginations. We can use our imaginations. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> so good to, to be podcast. here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Even one thing that you just said in terms of someone said that they wanted a man. I found earlier in my career that it was really important for people to know that I was a black man. So, I, you know, as a clinician, being a minority male clinician, you're often in spaces where I've often been in spaces where I'm the only one. Right. So at Lipscomb, I was the first black man to get my master's degree in counseling there. Same thing. For and my mind PhD. you, wait, before you go into that, what year was that? I went. I was there from 2010 to 2013. So 2013, Dr. Justin Dodson was the first what? Black male to get a de- master's degree in professional counseling from Lipscomb University. Wild. In 2013. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. I just wanted to highlight that. Continue, though. Yeah, but, you know, (laughs) so I was working as a therapist at a university here, and I remember saying, oh, we need to put our pictures online because I need people to know when they come down here that I'm a black man so we can go ahead and give them the choice because I don't want anybody working with me that is either going to be shocked by that or turned off by that because that's... And and everybody else around me was like, no, it'll be... No. You need you need to let them know because I don't want to have to hurt somebody's feelings if they try to come at me because <laughs> I will be first in line to get you before you get me. That's what you learn growing up in Memphis. You learn how to in get Memphis. people. Yeah, in Memphis, big Memphis. That's what you learn how to do. But it's a pleasure to be here. I just wanted to make sure I responded to that because even though I can't identify with being a woman and someone expecting a man, I can identify with someone expecting because Justin Dotson. You know, sometimes you can tell or you think you can tell what, or you hear someone's voice and you're like, hmm, I don't think you can tell with my name. And as a clinician no, in that so. space, you know, you don't you didn't yeah. uh, know what was up. So I needed people to know. If you see me and you're trying to see what's up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I got a bunch of students from Memphis this year. <laughs> they almost got into a nook if you buck moment because mm. Chicago said something about a Memphis artist. And I was just like, well, we got too many Memphis students in here. I don't want no problems. Yeah, like, it'll bam, shake. I'm yeah. trying to protect you. Let's relax. I'm trying to protect you, girl. <laughs> I know you tough, but like Memphis go hard. And I can't even, I never say Memphis. I say Memphis because... <laughs> Every time somebody say where they from, I'm like, where, as soon as they talk, as soon as I ask where they from, I only ask people where they're from if they're from Memphis because the mm-hmm. accent is just so thick. And we're in Nashville. So they'll say something. I'm like, right, right. Where are you from? Memphis. I figured. I figured. <laughs> oh, it's so Memphis. bad. It's so bad. I, had a I college, love it. I had a college professor at UT Chattanooga call me Memphis. That was, I don't even think she knew I my name. Too. It was just the nickname. Maybe she was from London or something. She was like, oh, you all are from Memphis. Yeah, and what about it? <laughs> exactly. Why you got to take that approach? Why you got to say, and what about it? Because See, that's how we protect y'all. ourselves. That's a safety mechanism. That, that's how we protect ourselves. Is it a safety ourselves. mechanism? Yeah, because people try to come at us. Be ready. Okay, so, <laughs> period. So, one, we did, a, we did a live last year. And during that time, I think your practice worked exclusively with Black men. And I know now you've expanded your practice, which is amazing. But for your clientele, with your patients, do you still work exclusively with Black men? I still work exclusively with adult men only. Adult by clinicians. Men. So I see primarily Black men because I am a Black man, but I do have uh, uh, clients who are of other races. But I would say 85% of my clientele are black men. My clinicians, they've expanded to also include women um, and some adolescents in the practice that they do. So now I have three great clinicians working with me in the practice. And it is, it's a beautiful thing to see and expand. I think that as clinicians who are also entrepreneurs, because that's two different things, oftentimes 
that we just get in the hustle and bustle of continuing to grow and make something work. But I saw this this need. Right. If we look at the statistics and we we don't see a lot of minority male therapists or black male therapists, but then there is this increase in numbers of symptoms of anxiety and depression among black men, among adult men. But we're like there is this gap. And so that's how I realized, oh, you got to do something about this because you can. You have the you have the skill, you have the opportunity and we're really just going to go out there and see what sticks. And I think that it has begun to do that. And I'm really, really proud of the work that we get to do. So this year we plan on doing some more community uh, forward facing events where we're educating people and really putting feet on the ground to meet the people where they are. Yeah, I'm proud of that, too, because I I always I, when it comes to discussing black men's mental health, mm-hmm. it's one of those spaces where I have a bunch of, you know, I have two boys, I, my husband my dad, and I have a lot of men around me. But when it comes to black men's mental health, it's one of the spaces where I just always want to advocate. And one of the ones where I'm OK with stating that I am a guest here. So I never feel comfortable being at the pulpit of that discussion. Um And I've said that before, and some people are like, why? And I'm like, if black women, you know darn well, if there was a discussion about black women's health and it was all black men, you would be like, y'all must, y'all must be out of your minds. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those realms where I never want to be in the forefront. I'm always happier being in the supportive role or being on the stage with someone. But it's difficult because there aren't as many black men that have, I would say the space to do things like that because your caseloads are always so big because there's so few of you and the time and energy. And that part kind of makes me sometimes want to go to the front because it's like, all right, y'all, now I'm over here working to help make a better world for your daughters. Mm -hmm. I need y'all to do the same thing for my sons. Um, So, but it's hard because your caseloads are always going to be so full because there's so few of you. And I think people don't grasp when they're talking about the scarcity of clinicians especially black clinicians, especially ones who are amazing enough to specialize in a certain population. Like we, we feel the need to, but we can't just drop. You want us to just drop our our nine, 10 and 11 AM appointments and just be like, you know, they wasn't worth it. I I will let you come in today. Like, it's just, I think people don't realize how hard it is for us to say our caseload is full too. Like Mm -hmm. it's hard for us to send those emails too. It's, it's difficult for me. Yeah, it really is. Especially when I started practicing, it was really, uh, I think I was living in a scarcity mindset, right? When you're trying Mm -hmm. to get your feet off the ground and you know that you're a quality clinician, but then you're really trying to just get the business in and then really learning how to say, well, no, I don't think we're going to be a good fit, but here are some great people that I'd love to refer you to, or Mm -hmm. no, I absolutely just don't have the space today or this week or in the next four weeks. How do you communicate that where you don't turn people off, you don't upset anybody, but then you also stand up for yourself because if I squeeze one more person, you're not going to get the best that I have. And so I've learned my threshold. I don't know about you, but I've learned my threshold of how many people I need to see in a week or in a day rather. So first it was just about, all right, I need to see this many people to make this amount of money. But now it's my cap is this amount of people a day or else I'm just not going to be any good for anybody. Hey, everyone, just a reminder that Mind Your Mental is not just a podcast. It is also a amazing community, if I do say so myself. It's phenomenal. I mean, you get more access to me. What more could you want in this life? So if you want to join the community, if you're not already on the community, would go to my social media. My social media is the same, Raquel Martin PhD, and DM me the word community so you can get details on joining this amazing flipping community. You get more access to me, y'all. Like, (laughs) I'm a delight. All right. All right. Hope to see you there.